friends welcome to bal kishor premier academy one of the most premier institute for get ies and psu examination in this video we are going to discuss about the relation between the particle world and the wave world because according to the wave particle quality principle we know that any particle suppose this is an particle having some mass m and having some velocity v so this particle is moving with velocity v so this particle can be thought as that some wave associated with this particle is moving with a velocity v also that means any particle in motion can be thought as a wave having some wavelength and frequency this wave is called the matter wave and this was the conclusion from the wave particle quality now we can see that in the electronic devices or in the real world there are two types of world that is the particle world another is the wave world so both of these world are related with each other according to the wave particle duality we have already seen that the a wave can be thought as a particle similarly a particle can be thought as a wave also so if we think that there are two worlds that is the particle world and the wave world then these two worlds should be related to each other by some means so before relating the two worlds let us see what are the particles or what are the traveling waves we are going to face inside the semiconductor we will not discuss here how they will be developed we will just see what are the particle and their related waves so for that case let us make a column like this in the first row i am writing the particle stream in the second row let us name it as equivalent traveling wave and the uh, third row the variable with respect to x and t so the name in the fourth row is the name of wave equation so these are the row that we are going to define now the first particle that I, we will encounter inside the semiconductor is the photon particles so the photon particles is analogous with the electromagnetic waves electro magnetic wave and similarly this electromagnetic wave since it is a traveling wave that means some parameters of the electromagnetic wave should vary with respect to x and t where x is the position so the parameters of the electromagnetic wave which will vary with respect to x and t are the electric field electric field and 
the magnetic field. These two properties of the electromagnetic wave will vary with respect to position and time. So every traveling wave should be described using some equation. The equation that will describe the electromagnetic wave is the Maxwell equation. Similarly, the next particle that we will encounter inside the semiconductor is the electron. And the wave that will be associated with this electron particle is the de Broglie wave. Since the de Broglie wave is also a traveling wave, so the parameter that will vary with respect to position and time will be the probability. So probability is the parameter of the de Broglie wave that will vary with respect to position and time in the case of de Broglie wave. And the equation that will describe the de Broglie wave is the Schrodinger equation. The third particle that we are going to encounter inside the semiconductor is the phonon particle. The wave associated with the phonon particle is called elastic wave. And this elastic wave is also a traveling wave. So inside the elastic wave, the atomic displacement will vary with respect to time and distance. We also call, we can also call it as atomic distance. Now, the equation which will describe the elastic wave are so many, there are so many equations by which we can use the elastic wave. So, we can write here there are lots of equations which can describe an elastic wave. Now, these are the particles that we will encounter inside the semiconductor. There are another particle also, but the main particles are these proton, electron, and the phonon. So, from this case, we can see that. Inside the semiconductors, when we will encounter some particles, we can think the particle as traveling wave also. Likewise, we can say that when we encounter a photon particle inside a semiconductor, we can think the photon particle as electromagnetic wave. There are some benefits of thinking like that. When we will go to that section, we will understand. And the electromagnetic wave, and in this electromagnetic wave, since it is a traveling wave, so the electric field and the magnetic field of this electromagnetic wave will vary with respect to time and this electromagnetic wave will be described by the equation Maxwell. So, this is the relation by which we can depict that the particle and the waves are interrelated with each other. Similarly, when we will come across the phonon particles inside the semiconductor, then we will say that the phonon particles or we can think the phonon particles as the elastic waves. These elastic waves 
are such type of wave in which the atomic displacement is going to vary with respect to time and position. And to describe the elastic wave, there is there is so many equation which can describe the elastic wave. That means we can write that there are so many equations are there which can describe the elastic wave. Like the first example is sound wave equation because sound wave is also a elastic wave. The second example is the ripple wave created in water that is also an elastic wave. Similarly, the traveling wave in a guitar string is also a traveling wave. So every case will have different different equations. So there is not a unique equation like the electromagnetic wave for the in the case of elastic wave. So that's why we have written so many equations are there. And these phonon terms, these phonon terms comes from the word phonon. And phono means the sound. In later videos, we will see how they will be produced. In this video, we are not describing how they are produced. Now, up to this, we have seen how the particles having some mass and velocity can be thought as, as traveling waves. So there are some two words inside the cut. So up to this we can see that in this real world, the real world can be divided into two groups. First one, we can see the real world in the particle nature. And we can also see the real world in the wave nature. And there must be some interlinked relation between these two natures. And to make the wave particle to one. So if we see the two equations we know, that is E equals to H nu and P equals to H by lambda, where E is the energy of the particle and P is the momentum of the particle and nu is the frequency of the wave and lambda is the wavelength of the wave and H is the Planck's constant. So from this equation, we can see two equations, we can see that the left hand side part is relating or depicting the particle. Similarly, the wave that is the these two parameters are relating the wave. So by these two equations we can see that the particle world and the wave worlds are related by these two equations. So these two equations are providing a bridge through which we can go from the particle world to the wave world and from the wave world to the particle world. Now, 
So these two equations are providing a bridge through which we can go from the particle world to the wave world and the wave world from the particle world. So in quantum physics, energy cannot vary continuously, but they vary in a discrete nature. So there must be a, some minimum amount of energy value that will be associated with this variation. And this minimum amount of energy is this one. So this is the minimum amount of energy that we are talking about. And this is the minimum amount of momentum that we are talking about. So using these two relation, we can say that we can move from the particle nature of a matter to the wave nature of a matter. So this is how the particle world and the wave worlds are related to each other. And last of all, do not forget to subscribe and like our channel to get more videos like this. Thank you.